Good morning everybody, Glenn here from Syngenta and I have just been away on a couple of weeks holiday. Yes, uh, south of France, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, very nice time, but I've come back and I do a pretty good job now of turning my phone off and turning everything off, so I really have no idea what's going on. I've come back and um, looking around the country, it is incredibly green as I drove back from Calais compared to what I saw in um, the south of France, where it is very tinder dry. So let's have a little look. This is my first time looking and see what's going on since I've been home. Now, this is one of the benefits of it, of the Turf Advisor app. So here we are, Thursday the 21st, or 24th, sorry, 21 degrees, 14 degrees overnight. That feels about right. Pretty muggy uh, overnight. We've had rain this morning, so I'm expecting leaf wetness to be right up there today, yeah, 29%. So we've got a damp leaf as I walk around out there now. It is pretty damp. So, But if I look at what's going on, uh, we've got five hours over 40% today, 22.5% is our two week average. So we're actually a little bit drier than we are historically through August. Now, August is a time where leaf wetness does tend to ramp up a bit. So there you go. But if I look back, see what's going on with leaf wetness, which is a key driver for disease, um, I can see actually since Sunday we've been pretty sky high every day. Look at that Tuesday, 10 hours above 40%, 8 hours Wednesday, 10 hours Sunday, uh, Monday, 11 hours. So we've had really quite a damp leaf wetness period. Now, how does that equate to rain? So let's have a little look, see what's been going on with rainfall. Well, here we are today. That's the rainfall that I saw this morning, but actually, in the kind of week running up to that looks like it's been pretty dry uh, maybe about one mil back on friday the 18th and before i left um that bottom box there we had a historic two-week average i can't remember what it was but i know the current two-week average was averaging way over that so it was a really wet period before i left but it looks like it's been pretty dry since so we've um kind of caught up on that and I guess the grass growth that I can see and how green everything is is a result of that really damp earlier period in August and through July. Okay so what else can I learn from this? Well so my immediate question there is how are we looking for diseases? Um, well let's have a look at dollar spot because this is a big challenge for a lot of people. Here we go we're over that 20% threshold uh, up at 23% today um on thursday the 24th but if i look forward things are dropping off a bit um, but if i look backwards again the last week looks like it's been really really tough for us now for us on the south coast here where i am it's not a dollar spot hot spot so we don't tend to see it loads anyway um uh, so you know for me to be hitting those kind of 30 percent that i had this week that, that's quite high. So if I am a site that's worried about dollar spot, I would be really concerned about that. And again, if we look at a two-week average here, 22% is our two-week average currently compared to our historic of 14%. So we are in higher dollar spot pressure um, than I would expect to be for this time of year. So that's definitely a watch out. Now, the other one I would be concerned about is microdochium. So this is a good chance to look at the Greencast microdochium model. Now, the reason I would be concerned about that now is I know we've had a damp leaf. I know we've been pretty mild. Potentially, we've renovated. Um, so let's have a look at what the Greencast Microdokium model is telling us. Now, this is a model that works from zero to four. So zero is where the model is identifying low risk or no risk, and four is the highest risk factor you can have. So historically, uh, we're based at 0 0.2 for this time of year. We're currently 0 0.1, so lower. Um, it's saying low microdochium pressure up till now and going forward. So that's interesting. Uh, this model is really based around temperature. So what that's saying, sorry, just got to plug my phone in. So what that's saying is we haven't had the ideal temperatures for microdochium to really get a hold. Now that might also mean that we've got microdochium around, um, but this model isn't designed to pick that up. So it's not a perfect model, no models are, but this isn't showing that we're under any microdochium pressure. So it'd be really interesting to see how that actually compares to what's going on. So I would definitely be scouting for that if I was returning from holiday on a golf course, uh, but the model is saying <clears throat> I should be more worried about dollar spot. 
Now, from a growth degree days point of view, um, we are slightly below average compared to the historic two week average. Now, that is because we have a lower temperature. So, but if we look at what's going on, we're still high all around the 20s, dropping off going forward. Um, so what that means is we're in a kind of 10, 11 day GDD window. Now, what I can now do is I can click on the risk factor up on the top right and I can look at spray records and go, oh, you know what, Jim sprayed with Primo uh, last Thursday, so on the 17th. Okay, and uh, set parameters. So we've had 154 since he last sprayed, so I've probably got 50 GDD before I need to spray again. I can then look forward and go, okay, so that's um, 15, 30, 45. I'm probably looking at next Monday or Tuesday for that next spray application to hit that GDD window. So that is a useful feature too. So anything else on here that we should really have a look at? Growth potential is a useful one to look at. And again, that completely reflects what I'm seeing out there at the moment. Um, my lawn as little maintenance as it gets is growing like stink and that is exactly what the growth potential model is showing us we are at pretty much maximum growth potential certainly going back for last week and it looks like it's dropping off a little bit going forward though okay um so anything else in there we might want to look at Knowing all of that, looking around, seeing what's going on, we may have some spraying that we need to do. So let's have a little look at this spray window. So here we are today, Thursday, and we can see that we don't have spray windows until nine o'clock today, but then we've got pretty good spray windows for the rest of the day. We've got some spray windows tomorrow on Friday. We've got a few early Saturday, early Sunday. Next Monday looks good, but Tuesday and Wednesday look like a challenge. So if we start thinking about our primo situation where we identified next Monday or next Tuesday as a day to go, we probably want to pencil that in for Monday looking at those spray windows. OK, now this spray window calculator is something we're working on and we're looking to develop it even further, but we'll keep you posted on that one. That's about it. I just want a quick look at the sunset because having completely ignored everything recently and just sat by a pool drinking pina coladas, uh, I want a little look to understand what's going on with daylight hours here. And we are starting to drop um, where we are today. We're 14 hours of day length at the moment. Um, but if we look forward to the end of next week or middle of next week, next Wednesday, that's dropped to 13 hours, 43. So we are very much on the turn now. We've got high leaf wetness. We've got shortening day lengths. We've got disease pressure floating around. We need to understand our site and what's going on. Uh, if we look at that temperature, yes, we've still got potential to move into warmer temperatures, but um, the temperature is dropping down. I would expect to start seeing some dollar spot pressure on the back of that high Smith Kearns model prediction last week. Maybe some microdochium popping up, loads and loads of growth. And I've learned all of that by looking at the app. That just gives me the indicators to go and look at on the golf course and plan what's going forward. Look, I hope that's useful for you. Um, keep feeding back. Let me know how you're getting on. And I uh, really appreciate everyone's feedback. Take care.